Aya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hare Krishna everybody thank you so much for joining today um, I wanted to uh, to congratulate everybody this is the last one the last session uh, although we might not cover everything so anyway let's see how much we can cover uh, to so so far we've gone through uh, 25 sessions so what is another the different scriptures timeline really timeline Ishwara talked about Jiva the soul and how karma reincarnation affects us and how we're living in this the three modes material nature uh, what are the aspects different aspects of God and the yoga system and how bhakti yoga is topmost Temple etiquette and artis. We talked about Ekadashi and festivals and Varnashram Dharma, some scars, Ganga Mata. We talked about the um, wonderful uh, holy river, the, the Savatars. We had a couple of sessions. Talked about the abodes of the Lord, spiritual world, and values, our values and culture, the, the different mothers, especially Gomata. And then we talked about uh, summarize the Bhagavad Gita in two sessions. And these two sessions, the last two sessions have been about the uh, devatas, the different uh, demigods. So I wanted to continue with that, uh, that same theme today. Now we talked about the difference between the devatas and the Supreme Lord last time. But today I wanted to focus in on um, some of the devatas. We're not obviously gonna be able to go through all of them, but the main, ones that uh, we sort of are very, very familiar with and how they stand in context of the Supreme Lord according to the principles of uh, Sarnath and Dharma. So if we look at the different devatas, we have Ganpati, Durga Mata, Saraswati, Surya Dev, Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Kartikeya, Hanuman. So um, very briefly, some of them we can describe. Lord Brahma is like the secondary creator. He's very powerful personality, but he's just like you and me, Jiva Soul. But he has the 50 qualities which we talked about before in full. And the, he's also empowered by the Lord to, to enact these secondary creation. The first primary sarga is uh, creation is created by the Lord when he breathes out. And then the Visarga, the secondary creation, is continued on by Lord Brahma after being given all the facility by the Supreme Lord. Um, Saraswati is uh, goddess of learning, um, very powerful personality, also the consort of Lord Brahma. Um, Durga, we will talk about in a little detail. Surya Dev, very powerful person. Without Surya Dev, there's practically no life because sunshine is so important to us. Uh, light is so important. Uh, and he is also actually a representative of Surya Narayan. A uh, very powerful uh, personality. He can be a jiva. He can also be uh, sometimes the Lord himself. But generally, he's a powerful living entity empowered by the Lord, an expansion of uh, Surinara. Kartikeya is this uh, brother of uh, Ganpati and son of Parvati and Lord Shiva. Again, he's the demigod, very powerful. Uh, he's like the warrior of the chief and commander of the devatas. And there are many uh, cultures, especially in the south of Bharat, who consider him as supreme. He's also known as, what's the other name? He's Murgan. Murgan. Yeah. So you find that name often uh, in the south uh, uh, being uh, worshipped. Hanuman, we, we are very familiar with Hanuman. He's the greatest servant of the Lord, especially in powered personality. He's not God, but he's a very powerful, con uh, like a um, uh, very powerful devotee of God, servant of God. Um, there are many devatas here, who are not here rather, um, like Vayu, 
wind god, agni, fire god. These are all very special personalities. Varun Dev, Lord of Water, Kuver, who is the treasurer of the demigods, Dharamraj or Yamraj, who is like in charge of uh, dharmic, of punishment, really, punishment. Uh, he's the one who gives out, meets out the punishment. Um, or, or if one has been good, he gives um, the benefit of that as well. So these we haven't uh, looked at at all uh, when we uh, when we're doing this particular course. I, for the daily courses that we're doing, we are looking in, in detail in um, the, the important uh, devatas like Vayu and Agni and um, uh, Dharamraj. But for our purposes, we've restricted it to, I was going to go through Lord Shiva because he's one of the most common deities that is worshipped. And if we get time, we'll have a look at Durga Mata and also Ganpati. And the context of which we're looking at them is how do they relate with the Supreme? So it's a little bit narrow. Uh, what we are looking at is a little bit narrowed down um, as opposed to looking at the, uh, the character of Lord Shiva, uh, how, what he does, why he does it. We actually want to narrow it down so that we can cover all three of these personalities. So we're just going to look at them and how do they relate to the Supreme? Okay. So Lord Shiva, who is he? He's identified, Lord Krishna is identified by Guru Sadhu in Shastra as the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the source of all material and spiritual worlds. So that's uh, defined in chapter 10, text number eight. Now, when that same Krishna wants to touch this material world and he does that through his expansion of Vishnu he transforms into Shiva the Lord's glance wakes up material nature so Lord Shiva is the same as Krishna but also different yeah this is not very well understood by the practitioners of Sanatana Dharma but it needs to be understood. And this is what is described in the scriptures. So what is this sameness and what is this difference? It's a bit like milk and yogurt. Although milk and yogurt are essentially the same, right? Because they're milk products, basically. Because yogurt is also a product of milk and milk is milk. One can use milk to make ghee, cheese, ice cream, or yogurt. But once it turns into yogurt, it can't be converted back into milk. So this is the scriptural reference that gives us this guidance. Shiram yatadati vikara visheshe yoga sanjayati natapatagastuhetu yam sambutam just as milk is transformed into God by the action of acids, but yet the effect curd is neither the same as nor different from its cause with this milk. So I adore the primeval Lord Govinda, of whom the state of Shambhu is a transformation for the performance of the work of destruction. Very important verse from the Brahma Samhita. When we add a curding agent to milk, for example, lemon juice. So when you boil the milk, you add lemon juice, it turns into um, <clears throat> paneer, for example. So in the same way, when the Lord is in touch with this material world, he becomes Shambhu or Lord Shiva. So essentially, there's no difference between the two, Krishna and Shiva milk and uh, paneer but there is still a difference because krishna himself will never touch this world vishnu will never touch this world but he does it through the agency of shiva so when this world comes into the context then shiva comes into being so this is quite important to understand so shiva is not the supreme personality of godhead but he's very very close to the supreme. Theo theologically, 
Shiva is both God and yet different from God. So he's not the supreme personality of Godhead. This is the most important thing. He has this aspect of godliness, godness, but yet he's also separate from God. Because of Shiva's intimate contact with this material world, and especially the quality of ignorance, it's not that Shiva is in ignorance, but he's in charge of ignorance. The souls in this world may not receive the same spiritual restoration by worshipping him as by worshipping Vishnu. Having said that, Lord Shiva is the most kindest personality. Whoever has been rejected by society, by the community, by family, by well-wishers, Shiva will give them shelter. This is the most amazing thing about Shiva, Lord Shiva. He's the most compassionate personality. Um, so Lord Shiva holds the keys to leaving this material world because he can guide us out of this place. But Lord Krishna holds the keys for allowing us to enter the spiritual world. This is the difference. Lord Shiva cannot give you that key to enter the spiritual world. He can guide. Even it's said in Varanasi, when one dies there, Lord Shiva will come and utter the name of Ram into one's ear. Ram is the one who will take the soul back to the spiritual world, not Shiva. And Lord Shiva's devotees are of three types. There's the ghosts, hobblings, and demons. Because he's so kind, he gives shelter even to those who are unwanted by society. Right? A lot of his disciple devotees are a little strange. <laughs> but the yogis and the Pasvis also worship him. Right? There you go. These are the Nagas, very famous in uh, Bharat. And the third category is who most fall into, those who want something. <laughs> they want something from him. They want material possessions. And Lord Shiva is very kind and generous. He gives. So uh, what was that? Lord Shiva's position is superior to that of Brahma. Um, but he's not quite on the same level as Vishnu. So this is, we've seen this before, the sort of... Uh, family chart of Krishna. And we see here, towards the bottom, we see Lord Vish the three Vishnus. And this is uh, Karan Daksha Vishnu, who breathes out when all the universe is coming to being. Out of these, Brahma is a Jiva. Shiva is a, in a category of his own. And Vishnu is, Vishnu Tattva is God. And we've talked about this before, how, uh, Shiva has 55 qualities, five more than Jiva or Brahma. And uh, Vishnu has five more qualities than Shiva. And Krishna has four more than even Vishnu. So Lord Shiva is a unique living being who merits his own category known as Shiva Tattva. Lord Shiva has his abode in Mount Kailash, which is beyond this world, right? It's also known as Shivlok. It's between the material and, and spiritual worlds. So this is Mount Kailash. This is where he meditates, lives. And this is this material world. This is like the boundaries. And if we go beyond the material world, we go into this uh, Viraja river, and then we enter into Kailash. There's Kailash. And beyond Kailash is Vaikuntha. And beyond Vaikuntha is Golok. So we've been through that before. So Kailash is beyond this world, but it's not quite in the spiritual world. Actually, the way the spiritual world is organized, it's the northeast corner of the spiritual world is where this material world is situated. And half of, and Shiva's planet is based, this Kailash is based <clears throat> on this northeast corner. Half of this planet is within, uh, is outside the spiritual world and half is within the spiritual world. So it's quite interesting. Lord Shiva is one of the gunavatas in charge of the mode of ignorance. And his job, one of his jobs at the end of uh, this, the universe is to destroy it. And Shambhu, 
or Shiva, is regarded as the greatest amongst devotees of Lord Vishnu. And this is the particular term that is used in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Vaishnav Nam Yatha Shambhu, is the greatest of the devotees. It's got many, many names of the Shiva Sambhu, um, Shiva, Nataraj, Rudra, Dakshinamurti, Vishwanath, Mahadev, Shankar, Nilnath, Bolanath, Ashutosh. I wasn't proposing to go through. Um, he's worshipped in the Linga form, Shivling. I wasn't again going to go into why in particular this is how he's worshipped. But there's loads of Shivlings, uh, Jyotilings, around 12 major Jyotilings, but actually there's hundreds of thousands. And Varnasi, Varanas, Banaras is considered to be the most beloved city of Shiva, a glorious, glorious place. Okay, um, there's a Sampadraya, Rudra Sampadaya, which he has begun, which is one of the four main Vaishnav Sampadayas. We haven't talked about the four Vaishnav Sampadayas because um, I didn't want to really just focus on Vaishnavism in this course. But there are four authorized Vaishnav Sampadayas, and one of them is called the Rudra Sampadaya. He's in charge of it. And he's bathed with bell leaves and milk, very popular worship. Many qualities he has, he's very compassionate, kind, humble, easily pleased. Asustosh is his name. If somebody wants something, he'll give. Even if it's not good for them, he'll still give it. <laughs> That's one of his downsides, actually. Very peaceful. Um, now, this is another thing which is quite interesting to note. Even Lord Ram worshipped Lord Shiva. Why? Why would Ram, if Ram is Supreme Lord, why does he worship Shiva? <laughs> it's an interesting uh, point, because many people who, who believe that Shiva is supreme give that argument. Why did uh, Ram worship him then, if he's not the supreme? <laughs> but this is the nature of the supreme god or krishna or ram they, they don't they're very humble souls great souls humble personalities they don't advertise themselves krishna only in the gita explains his supreme position otherwise hardly does he take does he care even that he's a supreme because he just wants to relate with his devotees in a very personal way so the Lord allows Lord Shiva to worship him. The Lord wants to be worshipped. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, he, he worships his own devotee because he loves his devotee so much. And Shiva is regarded to be the greatest devotee. So there's nothing unusual in this. You will see this even in this world. You know, when you have a really nice boss, you know, he'll get a cup of tea for you <laughs> because he's humble. Right? So in the same way, the Lord is very, very humble um, and he will worship his own devotees. What to speak of Lord Shiva? He worshipped Sudama, who was a, a poor beggar, right? A Brahmin beggar, he had nothing. He is even his clothes were dirty when he came here. He was thin as you know, a stick. Yet, what did Krishna do? He put him on the bed. He worshipped him. He washed his feet. <laughs> fed him. Yeah. Clothed him. So, this is nothing unusual. <clears throat> okay, so... Okay, better move on because uh, we won't get to the. Uh, there's loads of pastimes, of course. You all will be sort of familiar. Two sons. Yeah, yeah, two sons. That's right, Ganpati and Kartikeya. But I wanted to move on to another deity, which is very commonly worshipped, Shaktima, or Parvati, or more commonly known as Durga. So let me just get there. Okay, Durgama. Who is she? Right. Again, we're going to talk about it in context of uh, the Supreme Lord. 
in the spiritual world, there are three potencies. There's Samvit, there's Sandini, and there's Ladini. We're just going to focus on Ladini. Ladini is the internal potency of the Lord. This provides very great pleasure to the Lord. And actually, Shimati Radharani is the head of this Ladini potency. And one of our expansions is Durga. <laughs> Not the Durga of this world, the Durga in the spiritual world. <clears throat> There's two types of Durgas. There's Mahayo, uh, sorry, uh, Yoga Maya, which is the personal potency of the Supreme Lord. This is the expansion of Shrimati Radharani. And there's Mahamaya. Mahamaya is again an expansion of Yoga Maya. So this Yoga Maya is spiritual energy. Maya, Mahamaya is what is keeping us in this world. That is the Durga that we are familiar with. But she is an expansion of the spiritual Durga. <clears throat> they have different roles. The Yoga Maya Durga makes uh, even the Lord forget himself. Because <laughs> if the Lord always remembered himself as a supreme, there wouldn't be any sweet pastimes with him because everybody would be just bowing down to him and he'll be the, the Lord and Master. Yoga Maya also allows his pure devotees to have different transcendental mellows with him as uh, father, or mother, or lover, or friend. Yoga Maya creates a spiritual sentiment in the minds of the damsels of Braj, the gopis, by which they think Krishna is their lover. And any pastime conducted by the Supreme Lord is an arrangement by Yoga Maya. Yoga Maya is in charge, actually, of the spiritual world, not in Mahamaya. And this is the permanent exhibition of Krishna's Maya. This Maya is very special Maya. She bestows on Lord Krishna's devotees, pure devotion to Krishna. And she is the Vaishnav Shakti of the Vaishnavas. She gives final liberation to those uh, who want and, uh, this, this happiness. This um, yoga maya transforms into mahamaya in this material world. And her responsibility is to reform those souls who have rebelled against the laws of the spiritual land and come to this world. So this is the role of mahamaya is to reform us, right? And is to also, if we're not willing to go, if not willing to be reformed, is to keep us here. Mahamaya means the external portal, which puts a conditioned soul into illusion that he is happy by material adjustment. We can never be happy in this world, but because of Mahamaya, we consider ourselves happy here. But actually, this is not our world. But because of the arrangements of Maya, we're feeling this is our world. <laughs> but it, this ex is Krishna's exhibition of Maya, but it's temporary. It's a perverted reflection of the real Maya, the real Yoga Maya. It is not possible for Maha Maya, Maha Maya to con control liberated souls. Those who are already with God, they are not under the jurisdiction of Maha Maya. This world, which we call wonderful and uh, delight to live in, is compared to a prison house. Durga actually means prison housekeeper. She's the one who's the guard. Mm -hmm. Here, life is uncertain. Misery is inevitable. A relationship is temporary and death is certain. As prisoners are given a uniform, similarly, we are given a uniform of a human body or an animal body. As long as we have this body made of flesh, bones, etc., and we are in this material world, we are under the jurisdiction of Mahamaya, this Durga Devi. So she's a pure devotee of the Lord. She has a function of keeping us in this world until we reform ourselves. But if we try to reform ourselves, she will help us attain the Supreme because she is a wonderful devotee of the Lord. On behalf of the Supreme Lord, she takes complete charge of this material world. 
She acts under the direction of the Supreme Lord, just as a shadow follows the substance. Her consort, uh, Shiva's consort, are different names, are known as different names, Uma, Sati, Parvati, Durga, Kali, Shakti. These are all one and the same. They're all effectively Durga. You could call them Durga. And they have two children, sick headed Skanda, that's Kartikeya, and the elephant-headed Ganesh. Shiva is the original material main. Durga is the original material female. Now, uh, she has many characteristics. We're not going to go into her characteristics because I just wanted to focus on her relationship with the Supreme. Generally speaking, people will worship her for wealth, for prosperity, um, for good health, for wife, for husband, for children, for cars. But this is actually the deluding aspect of Durga. If we're just worshiping her for that or praying for that from her, we've got it wrong. Her service is to keep the conditioned souls within the material world as she is a prison gatehouse keeper. Oops. Okay, where is the scriptural reference of all this? In the Brahma Samhita 544. Mm-hmm. Translation, the external potency of Maya, who is of nature of the shadow of the Chit potency, is worshipped by all people as Durga, the creating, preserving and destroying agency of this mundane world. I adore the primeval Lord Govinda in accordance with whose will Durga conducts herself. So, the external potency Maya, that's Mahamaya, which we are talking about is worshipped by all as Durga. Um, And uh, she is under the charge of Govinda. This is the most important thing we have to understand. However, when the soul again remembers remembers Govinda by coming in contact with self-realized souls, Durga, Mahamaya herself then becomes the agency of their deliverance by the will of Govinda. This is the most important thing to understand about Durga. If we're worshipping her just for money or some material transaction, then we are, we've lost the purpose. But if we um, try to connect with the Supreme Lord, she will help us. If we worship her for mundane things, she will keep us in this world. She will give us what we want to stay in this world. Um, But we will have missed an opportunity to get out of this world. Now she's got, of course, many, many different names, 108 names I recite. There's a lot of pujas that take place uh, uh, for her, Um, especially in Bengal side, they have Durga Puja. It goes on for maybe nine days. She's very famous for uh, this um, slaying of the demon Mahi Mahishashura. 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 We won't go into the pastime. She's, she, she's ferocious. She's very beautiful, but very ferocious. She's got loads of weapons and loads of arms. She travels on a, a lion. Carrier. A carrier a is, a carrier lion. is a lion. So nobody to mess about with. <laughs> and thoroughly, you know, worship is, uh, you know, uh, hugely in Bharat. But the, there's a misconception of the worship. This is the problem. And she's got huge influence, not just in religion. This song, One Day Mataram, is, is essentially dedication to her, uh, as well as Bharat, of course. Um, or 
in <laughs> famous in Bollywood as well. So yeah, she's um, very well worshipped in Bharat. But this is a really nice pastor. Actually, you can talk about this. This is how to please Durga, how to please her, right? Chandidas was a devoted worshipper of goddess Durga. His brother, however, was a Vaishnav. So one was worshipping Shakti, the other was Vaishnav. And he worshipped Shaligram. Chandidas was very rich. And generally you find this, the worries of Shakti. Shakti or Shakta, very rich, but Vaishnavas are poor. <laughs> His brother was poor. Chandidas had a big, beautiful garden. He used to offer the flowers from the garden to Durga Devi. His brother, too, desired to offer beautiful, these beautiful flowers to the Shaligram. Once he mentally offered a beautiful, colorful flower of the garden, to his shaligram. So he just mentally offered it. It didn't belong to him, so he didn't take it. He just mentally offered it. It so happened on that same day, uh, Chandidas also offered the same flower to Durga, but the actual flower. As soon as the flower was offered, Durga appeared in front of Chandidas. I am extremely pleased with you, Chandidas. What benediction do you want? <laughs> now, Chandidas was amazed. He was surprised. I worship you daily. But why are you so pleased with me today? And Durga Mata answers, it is because you have offered me a flower which has also been offered to Shaligram. So it's, it's the Lord's Prashad that you offered me. By seeing that Prashad flower, I became pleased. So I appeared before you. Chandidas immediately inquired, is it that you get pleased when one worships the Supreme Lord Krishna? Durga, in a compassionate voice, said, yes, the Supreme Lord is the cause of all causes, is the original cause of all creation. I get extremely pleased when one, anyone worships the Supreme Lord Krishna. So if you want to please me, worship the Supreme Lord Krishna. Chandidas understood the ultimate truth, and he became a great devotee of Krishna, and this pleased Goddess Durga, the consort of Lord Shiva. Chandidas later composed many songs in which he describes a transcendental feeling of separation of Ratha and Krishna. So this is very instructive pastime. So now I think Pari is not here. So we're not going to have a quiz. So if the audience don't mind. Oh, she's here. Oh, hi, hi Krishna. When did you come in? <laughs> you sneak in. Sorry, bro. That's okay. Just joining now. But, oh, no problem. No problem. Thank you. I see no, you don't have to explain. Sorry. Thank you. No, thank you so much for joining. But what I was thinking of doing, because we haven't got much left, but I wanted to just also talk about Ganpati, Ganesh, and his position as well. Because um, we, we just need to be clear as to how does he relate with the Supreme. Okay. So let's do, do, do this first. Yet Pada Pala Payugam Vinidaya Kumba Twande Pranama Samayasa Gandari Raja Vignan Vihantu Malamasha Jagatra Yashya Govinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. Translation I order, adore the primeval Lord Govinda, whose lotus feet are always held by Ganesh upon the pair of tumuli protruding from his elephant head in order to obtain power for his function of destroying all the obstacles on the path of progress of the three worlds. So this is the most amazing thing about Ganesh. He destroys all the obstacles on the path of progress in the spiritual, towards the spiritual world. But where does he get his power from? He gets it from the lotus feet of Lord Govinda. So this is very important to understand. Um, now, He's considered to be the destroyer of all objects. He's uh, worshipped at the beginning of any ritual, right? Any puja. Any puja. Um, when you buy a car, um, you do Ganpati puja. <laughs> uh, he's the first of the sons. He's, he's a very special personality, such a lovable uh, personality. He's, he's, he's chubby. He's got an elephant head. 
um, he's just a fun loving person. Um, he's fond of sweets, which is one of the things which uh, I like about him very much. <laughs> he has a tendency to overeat. <laughs> and his carrier, he's a rat. <laughs> He's just one of the most amazing personalities. Um, now, yeah, some, pay, some say he's a brahmachari, but some say he's got two wives as well. So it's, and the most important festival for him is Ganesh Chaturthi. But otherwise he's worshiped on a very regular basis um, by uh, those following Sanatan Dharma. And again, I would just, say that we need to understand, uh, I'm not going to go through all of these pastimes uh, because we haven't got time, uh, but we are going to go through this on a daily basis if anybody wants to join us at 3.30 British summertime um, uh, from next week onwards, or probably, yeah, next week onwards. So what is his position com in comparison to the Supreme Lord? He is one... Yeah, he is a personality who um, can assist us in removing any obstacles on our path, on our spiritual path to the Lord. If one is a Vaishnav, actually you don't have to worship any of these devatas, neither Lord Shiva, neither Lord, uh, neither Durga Mata, neither Lord Ganesh, because you're already on the path. There is a... Um, these personalities actually already exist in the spiritual world as Vishnu Tattva. And they're, these are their expansions. So if one is worshipping Lord Krishna, one is already under the shelter of Ganesh within the spiritual realm. There's no requirement to separately worship Ganesh who is in this world. But it doesn't mean that we are disrespectful. That's really not all. Um, we we respect and lovingly um, remember these great personalities because they are themselves great devotees of the Lord. They can help others who want to become devotees. Uh, so we, we always look upon these personalities with great affection. Now Ganesh's attributes, he's the one personality who wrote uh, all of the scriptures. It's one of the things. Vyas was the one who dictated, but Ganpati wrote the scriptures down. It's one of his contributions to our, for our welfare. So when we read the Bhagavad Gita, when we read the Srimad Bhagavatam, remember that this is actually by the mercy of Ganpati that we are able to do this. So... Um, Okay, I think uh, if we don't stop here, we will run over time. This is where I wanted to stop. Are there any questions? Uh, this, what I've told you may well go against what you've perhaps been taught all your life or, uh, or understand all your life. So I will understand if it doesn't quite ring any bells, <laughs> ring a, you know, it doesn't go with what you're thinking. Any questions? or comments, or even disagreements. Happy for any disagreements should be aired as well. Okay. So I think everybody agrees then, huh? <laughs> So, um, Pari, have you, did you manage to do a quiz? Yes. Am I audible? Um, it's, it's quite a bit of interference, actually. I didn't manage to do the quiz. So... Okay, not to worry, not to worry, not to worry. Yeah. That's okay, that's okay, don't worry. So, um, in that case, I don't know if there's no questions. We've covered as much of Sanatana Dharma as uh, I think we can. Um, 
in the 26th. We hope you enjoyed the sessions and it was uh, knowledgeable and helpful. And we will start the Bhagavad Gita in the next uh, couple of weeks. So please watch this space. Yeah. Uh, Baklave? No, I just want to say thank you so much. And I really enjoyed it. And I will join the Bhagavad Gita as well. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Looking forward to that. Uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll get, we just, I just need to get my act sorted out. <laughs> so we're going to start a children's sessions of, of uh, Sanatana Dharma, similar lines to what we've done here, uh, but obviously tailored for uh, our children to give them the richness of Vedic culture share the richness of Vedic culture and Priti is on the call. She, she's going to be like uh, invigilating and uh, uh, hopefully uh, running on most of it. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we wanted to uh, recommend you to recommend this to your children or your grandchildren, whoever's uh, uh, more appropriate. Uh, please join on a Saturday evening, starts at about uh, 5.45 uh, British summer time. And yes, uh, no, that's fine. We'll work that out later. Okay, is there anything else? Anybody else? Anything uh, you'd like to share? Otherwise, we can close the session. I'd just like to thank you, Prabhuji. I mean, it's long. Uh, six months, you and Mataji both were. Mm -hmm. I mean, wherever you are, you are actually uh, on time to the course and giving us so much of knowledge and wisdom. So thanks a lot. No, thank you. Thank you for joining and uh, sparing your time. I know your time is very valuable because you don't have much of it. Working life is, uh, I know, very, very busy. So appreciate you spending your valuable time with us. And we've got nothing else to do, you know, in mm -hmm. our lives. So <laughs> this is nothing special in that sense. Okay. Oh, yes, Pari. Thank you so much. Thank you for all your help for uh, doing. And I wanted uh, Pari to actually be a very important part of the Bhagavad Gita session. So I'll share with uh, Pari the, the course notes and uh, hopefully she'll be, take, she'll be get, getting us through a lot of the Bhagavad Gita. Okay, thank you so much, everybody. Hare Krishna. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, thank Hare Bol. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yes. Yes. Um. No, I can't. Uh, I can't go to the ten thirty class. The I mean the three thirty class because uh, there is a ratayatra on Montreal, so I can't. Oh, go oh very good. Enjoy. Yeah, enjoy. Enjoy it. it. Yeah. yeah. Well done. Thank you for joining. Yeah. Now, huh? Take care.